It started in 2007. Okay. And um, the two founders of Google actually provided me some grants uh, for a project I called Sustainable Energy for Spaceship Earth. Okay. And it was based on the idea that we're starting to run short on oil. But it's not only a question of running low on oil, but it's also a question of realizing the impact of what's going on by using oil. Yeah. Japan is the third largest importer of oil in the world right now, behind China and the United States. And so I am in Japan because I spent three, now five years trying to figure out what we could do to replace fossil fuels with a sustainable alternative that won't compete with agriculture because we're going to need food and clean water. And so the project I came up with I call OMEGA. And OMEGA is an acronym for Offshore Membrane Enclosures for Growing Algae. And algae are interesting because they're the fastest growing biomass on the planet. And more importantly, they're the best producers of oil. So they produce vegetable oil. And they're sustainable. And they're sustainable if we grow them in our waste streams. So our big cities now are pumping water offshore and just throwing away the water that we consider wastewater. But algae grow really well in that water. So rather than just throw the water away, we turn it into a biomass of microalgae that make oil. If we're going to build an infrastructure offshore, then we can do solar panels on the surface of that infrastructure, and we can do wind energy and wave energy, and we can do aquaculture so we can make food. And so, it, it re because I work for NASA and I work in a life support branch, it was about life support. It was about the notion that if you go into space, there's nothing there. And you have to bring everything with you from here. From here. And therefore, you have to be extremely careful with what you do with all of your resources. Up there, right? Up there. And that has taught us how to recycle everything. And so that level of closed loop life support is what I, that notion is what I brought to the Omega. Project. That's so weird because I was just teaching my daughter. My daughter had just started going to work in preschool, like near my town. And she was, she was asking me, what's this in the analogy? Right? And I was like, it was pretty hard to explain. I was like, well, if you have water, then life would grow out of this. But my, my daughter was like, mm. I was like, I can't see it. Right? I was like, because she can't believe, she can believe what she can see. But she can't really imagine what she can't see. So I was like, I, I, I need to take her to like, you know, a science lab. That was like the only thing that I could teach her, you know. Yeah. But I mean, like, hearing your ideas, I mean, it's really exactly what my daughter's era is gonna have to start doing for like, you know, a fact. You know, they should know all that. Yeah, I'm telling everybody, you know, I mean, I'm teach, I'm going to schools in J Japanese elementary school. And I'm asking kids, do you know what stand up in Japanese is tachiagaru? It means tachiagaru, but um, straight, literally, it means just to stand up, you know, to, to bow, you know. And that's the only stand up they know. They don't know the metaphor of stand up. And that means like, if your mom is you know, cleaning the house and washing dishes, if the kid sees your mom, it's like, hey mom, I'll be, let me help you. And, you know, that's standing up. You know, and then I'm trying to teach all these kids that standing up is a little different, you know, like you need, you need your will and you need your imagination in order to stand up. And that's the whole concept of standing up. And, uh, and we sold this album just 1,111 people. We only made that much money. That's because 1,000 people is a amount of people that I can concentrate and I can really, you know, have contact with. And I can take them around, like if I say, I want a fan tour to Hawaii, I can take that thousand and talk to that thousand. If it's that thousand, I can autograph and talk to each thousand. And that thousand is my first power. You know, and then those thousand people are already thinking and giving me new ideas. Like, what about this kind of standing? Like, what about this, this? And this is my first team that I have. And it's like my first lab, you know, like, so, I mean, I would love to introduce all to that first thousand and try to do a test or something, and we could really get some, you know, outcomes of something.
Oh, that's an interesting idea. My, my whole concept of TED that I would love to do a speech on is uh, sound generation. Uh, sound generation. And for the sound, it has a frequency. And not just for sound, um, for sound music, like if, if there's humidity, sound it goes slower and it goes slower. Like with light, it doesn't matter if it's humid it, it or not, it just goes straight with the same speed or not, right? The sound. It, you know, it creates low or high within the temperature. But if you get, if you if you could um, change the frequency, like you know how low frequency you can't really hear underneath the um, minus 18 decibel, but it creates like a shake when it's too low. But you can't hear it. So what if we can generate power with uh, you know the sound? And like airport or station or Omatsuri, Japanese Omatsuri people shouting, you know, or, or like I'm a musician that like generate power with sound, like, you know, I mean, how is there any possible, uh, you know, like possibility of creating power with sound? And I've been trying to talk in a lot of people. Like,